Good morning, and thank you for attending this very intimate, so will be dense of, of discussion uh, this morning. So uh, this workshop is to uh, introduce and discuss and create scenarios around what we call that meta the special interfa uh, interface design guidelines. Um, and before I get into the details of it, uh, I will be presenting, I'm Stefano Baldassi, and a, uh, along with uh, Stephanie Rosenberg from, from uh, Meta, she will be interacting, uh, interacting with you during the uh, experience, during the next uh, hour. So there's a, a few uh, things to do to start this. If you guys have your own device, you can uh, take it out. So uh, if you have a computer or a tablet, you can have it out. That would uh, allow you to uh, uh, to have like the guidelines available and, and you can download the guidelines document uh, which we're studying. It's, it's kind of a, uh, it's one of the first times we are sharing the entire document with the community. Uh, this is the link. <clears throat> then one of the things uh, Stephanie will um, do is to uh, connect with you guys and grab uh, and uh, get your name and your email with your name and your email. Uh, she will uh, invite you to a very private invisible outside of this uh, Facebook group. Uh, we are going to do this workshop in different avenues. This is one of the first time we're giving this uh, and we don't know about the scale so a lot of the activities will collect data through, through uh, the Facebook group so we can interact in real time with an audience. It's bit.li slash meta design guidelines in a word. The link is also shared in the Facebook group so if we want to take just a right. minute to collect everyone's names I can add you all to that group so we can have that as part of the discussion. Then yes, Stephanie is collecting your uh, details so you can, so she can invite you to the Facebook group and, and ideally, depending on the scale of the workshop, uh, we can create groups so you can work autonomously and then we, uh, eventually you'll select the activity after a short presentation of the principles and submit your ideas in the Facebook group. That way we connect to the Facebook group and as we get in input we can uh, discuss about it, okay? What are the uh, special interface design uh, guidelines. is a document uh, that we created at Meta after three years uh, of very, very intense brainstorming that involved me and my team, and we are by uh, expertise, neuroscientists, academic like visual perception neuroscientists, uh, but also we had designers, UX designers, HCI researcher, and, and, and people in between uh, at Meta. Uh, why? Because we are switching with augmented reality and, and, and with virtual reality too, we are switching our, our uh, way of thinking and interface from flat and windows uh, icons, menus and pointers, the WIMP interface, to an interface that is deployed in the 3D space. And, and we were thinking about what it takes to design such an interface and because we are now designing in space, the type of interface will be way more natural than it was with our traditional uh, devices. This is why we need to know what are the rules of the brain that allows this interaction to be as natural as possible, right? Which is the reason why uh, this conference had a full day on neuroscience and, and VR, if you wish, okay? Uh, we need to uh, nurture the dialogue between people with experience in neuroscience, uh, like me, for example, and people with expertise in UX, design, developers, and, and, and converge onto something that would be way more impactful than, than what we've been using so far. Uh, the idea is to create you know, a, a zero learning curve machine or, or, or to, uh, <clears throat> to take the path of the, what we call the neural path of least resistance. So create interfaces that create the least uh, friction with what our brains want to do. For example, imagine that you have to design a, a brush uh, and, and, and you have a, a way to use your hands. Uh, we believe that something that has affordance and has like an analogic resemblance to, to, the, use, to, to, uh, to the tools that we, we are familiar with, that we have strong mental models for, 
like an actual uh, pen or a paintbrush, it's much, it's much better as a tool than, than you know, something that gets triggered with an icon and as a, a pointer, a generic pointer to uh, uh, <clears throat> define our interaction with the digital content, okay? So this is the general idea. And in order to do that, we have nine principles. If you uh, download the documents, you'll have access to that, or you can gather with some other people and look at that because you will have to go over the document. By the way, so as you download the document, you will see that every guidelines, and there's nine such guidelines, uh, as this format. There is a summary, which is what I'll quickly review through my slide, and it's a glimpse of the idea behind each guideline. Each guideline has a UX suggestion and has the neuroscience underneath it, and it points to an actual neuroscience paper that triggered a lot of our discussion, but that paper is a selection out of uh, dozens of other papers for each topic. Uh, for UX designers, we have UI design suggestions uh, that, that give relatively specific uh, ways of addressing uh, that guideline. Uh, we have a neuroscience section and further study section, and, and there's also a lot of objections. And, and when we have a before you object section, it's because there was sometimes the problem didn't converge into a single solution, right? So there are objections and we want to deal with that, but a lot of the reason why we're exposing this, which is a manifesto for, for special interface guidelines, is to create a conversation with the community. And we're exposing this to everyone, including other products in the field. We, we tend not to call exactly other products competitors because, uh, because it's too early to define who's, who's the leading product and who's the competitor product and so forth. Okay, we think we're, we're coming up with, a, a, this is core of our product and meta, if you wish. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, quickly, principle number one is think special, place tools and content in space. Uh, the idea is to, so you see on the left is uh, what we want the interface to be looking like, and this is what, this is the do or this is the don't, if you wish, okay? Uh, so, it is, for this principle is to replace flat layouts with windows, menus, and buttons that generally favor only one half of the visual system. I said a little bit of that in my talk yesterday. With a special interface that arranges tool and content in 3D space around the user. This leverages the user full perception of form and depth. Uh, so this is about the what, in a way, okay? Uh, what do we want to introduce in, the, in a special interface? Principle number two is minimize abstractions. Design tools with volumes and affordances. So now that we understand how to arrange objects in space, how should we design the object themselves? We uh, advocate to replace abstract representations like flat icons with volumetric tools uh, featuring physical characteristics that suggest their, their use without having to pass through specific instructions, leveraging the neuroscience of affordance, okay? Uh, so this is about the how, if you want. Principle number three is you are the OS. Organize holographic files and tools in the user's environment. Uh, <clears throat> we advocate to replace the traditional file system, which demands continual decoding of abstract symbols and a lot of hierarchies that, that uh, over, overflow our, our semantic memory, if you want, with special organization of files in the world, leveraging the brain's special memory, naturally tracking the content of our personal space. This is about the where, in a way, okay? And, and, and it's unfolding in space something that we got lost very often, like finding our file into complex, like over nested structures. <clears throat> Principle number four is touch to see, use the hands to interact directly. Uh, we advocate to replace remote gestures with direct manipulation right where the object is, leveraging the neuroscience of interaction, that's complex brain systems for that. Uh, which is that brains naturally hide an understanding of objects near the hand. Principle number five is do not disturb, protect the user's workflow from this uh, disruption. Um, special computing, like any other computer form, demands special notifications. So rather than, we, we advocate that rather than interrupting the user's workflow with pop-ups, uh, we, we should allow users to designate a separate container to passively collect incoming notifications, like this container here. This allows the user to remain focused on their tasks, stopping to check for updates, for updates only when, when they can and they want to do it, uh, leveraging the neuroscience of, of attention. 
Principle number six, we're getting more and more into, into deep concepts here, is avoid surprises and magic tricks. Uh, even the, the action itself should be paired with intuitive outcomes. Outcomes and, and actions that fit with our existing mental models for interacting with uh, the real, the physical world. So avoid magic elements that appear unrelated to user behavior or prior causes or violate laws of physics to the point of confusion, as they confound the user's ex expectation and trigger uh, error neurons. Uh, we want to use existing mental models as much as possible. This is the take home of that. This is about social behavior. The holographic campfire don't obscure hands and faces with the UI. Replaces UIs that block eye contact with a shared space that promotes eye contact and ensures hands are visible while collaborating. Uh, doing so leverages the powers of mirror neurons and the strong mechanisms we have for face uh, coding. Number eight or nine uh, are very interesting and, and there may be interesting conversation around. Public by default, shared understanding reduces anxiety among users. One effect is the Google Glass, you know, big thing that, you know, oh, this guy is, is accessing my information and so forth. We advocate that you know, whenever we will be, everybody will be using glasses to replace private UIs uh, which separate users and cause ambiguity by obscuring the intention of users. Now we have our interfaces in space, so it's very important to think about it. With a common digital environment for all meta users that leverages the neuroscience of theory of mind and ensures comfortable awareness to all participants. We want to reduce social anxiety by making sure that we know what other people around us are doing with their special interface because the special interface interacts with the physical world. So we know what people are doing around us with physical objects. We should know what they're doing with their digital objects. Okay. Number nine, uh, that's very interesting. I love that. Uh, it's augmented non-mixed reality and the definition, we can talk about the definition, enhance the user's perception with relevant information. So we uh, think that rather than block users' reality, as in virtual reality, or distort the user reality, as in mixed reality, getting like, maybe this is your notification system, this, this, this T-Rex like announcing that maybe uh, your mother-in-law has is, is sent you an email, right? Uh, <clears throat> uh, sorry. Uh, we advocate to provide meta UIs, which are metadata about the world, near the object they refer to, without occluding the object they refer to, adding something useful to the understanding of the physical world, to the use of the physical world without, you know, replacing. Uh, and this is, in a way, the summer, this is the strongest, uh, the principle that has the strongest vision uh, of Meta and also summarizes the entire document, create an informative, powerful and unobtrusive layer of digital information on top of the real world. So, and this is also our definition of augmented reality versus mixed reality, okay. So, if you take a look at the document now, this is, this is the rest of, of, uh, of our time, uh, 30 to 40 minutes, is about uh, a series of brainstorming activities. We suggest, we, we, you can gather together, if you don't have the document, you can go close to somebody who has a device, I should be within these limits, I have boundaries, virtual. Uh, and and uh, take a look at the document, uh, read it, and we, <clears throat> the activities would be to create and propose scenarios for a special application that includes three or more of the guidelines of the principles. Uh, or, and or, you can do both, to share your thoughts on the following questions by, and submitting your work through the Facebook group that I will connect to so we will see the flow of, of uh, feedback. These are the questions. How do these guidelines apply to the physical world and design of physical objects? Think that the special guidelines are in a way telling us to create digital interfaces that are very, very close to what we've been doing with physical objects and, to, and tools. So uh, are there things, are there interfaces in the physical world that remind you of that or are we going beyond that? You can also criticize, go, go strong if you want. How do these guidelines apply to your activity or interest in VR and AR? Question number three, can you think of examples or counterexamples for the guidelines in your experience with VR and AR? Um, this, is an, uh, this is an interesting one. What would your favorite app or tool um, 
of your flat OS, your application for your computer or your, or your iPad, uh, what would it look like in AR if you had to follow the uh, special interface guidelines? And what instead if you were completely free to design it, okay? Because this is a manifesto, this is uh, a suggestion that we're giving, but we're not forcing developers to use our, our guidelines. Uh, <coughs> Last is, uh, how would you integrate physical and digital workspace in your design? And would these special interface guidelines help? So uh, uh, if you have like a scenario that you can create and think about whether or not it fits with your existing activity, uh, if you can apply to that scenario the, the principles, what would it look like? You can also sketch, you can use, uh, you can come and use that. You can gather with other people or work individually, given the size of the group yeah. today? I was going to suggest that uh, given that we're kind of a smaller group, uh, we could shift from using the Facebook group to really just having a conversation yeah. here. I've shared the bit.ly here for anyone that was wanting to grab, um, to download the, the guidelines. You should be able to uh, follow that link and, and download those, and we can also uh, put them back up on, our, on the screen if you could. Yeah, I would say it's 9.30 if forward the next, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, you go through the document and you start thinking you know, of a scenario. Uh, then we'll start the discussion as you're still thinking. So we can use, what do you think, the next 15 minutes to just to digest and ask, uh, and ask questions if you want. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So we're gonna shift from the Facebook group um, and just have the discussion yeah. here. So first step is go ahead and download the guidelines we can also bring them back up on the board if we want to kind of go through them or if there were any specific questions since we, we presented yeah. them pretty quickly as well. Um, but the, the premise of it is, you know, these are the kind of guidelines that, that Meta is proposing around spatial design. And you know, coming, from that, coming from Meta's background, what are we, how could we think about some of these, these questions that Stefano has put up here? Yeah, and, and maybe once again, this is not a, a practical guideline document. This is, a, this is about the vision of Meta and it's a manifesto. We also have another document that will tell the developer exactly how to design within the Meta 2 environment. But, but these uh, guidelines, they go beyond even the specific product that we're shipping now. We should uh, close because uh, I think we have to give room to the next. We can keep the conversation outside.